Monday, August 20th, yeah, 2012, and it's time, we're going to, this is the first segment of Big Bang Theory, it's not, uh, uh, <laughs> when I got started, I got started a while ago, but I was fixing things up, the whole weekend was pretty good, uh, I'm working out on a uh, new uh, graphic overlay system, right now, if you notice, uh, I have the static graphic overlay, you can see the static graphic overlay, to the left and right. Uh, and what I worked in is I worked in a way of doing uh, dynamic graphic overlays. So that as I point to something, I point to a graphic last time I was pointing to the, um, the icon of chemises or to the icon of, uh, uh, of the Holy Transfiguration, uh, that's metamorphosis. Uh, and you'll see the graphics change. And that's what I'm working on next is I'm uh, working on to add in dynamic graphics. That's the whole key next here. And I had done some filming over the weekend, but now I'm going to go back and reshoot everything to add in the dynamic graphics once I finish setting up the dyna dynamic graphics here. So that's sort of what's going on now. Uh, in about an uh, hour and a half, I'm leaving to go to church again. Uh, the chemises uh, goes f uh, until August 28th. Uh, is, 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 is one feast and festival uh, that lasts uh, just about a little more than uh, two weeks. It starts on the 14th of August and goes to the 28th of August. And there is a difference between calendars. Uh, what happens is, is that a lot of churches, the Greek churches, will celebrate chemises uh, from August 1st to August 15th. The problem with that is, is that that calendar they're using is uh, the way they're using the calendar doesn't translate properly. It was the first to the fifteenth on the Julian calendar when the Julian calendar was around. But when you translate it to the Gregorian calendar, the first of August on the Julian calendar becomes the fourteenth of August on on the Gregorian calendar. So today's calendar is the Gregorian calendar. So uh, if you want to celebrate something that's August 1st on the Julian calendar, you celebrate it on August 14th because that's the, that's the same date. You have to sort of you have to adjust for the change in calendars. Otherwise, you're celebrating a, a, a feast on uh, on any old random day. Uh, I mean, it's like celebrating your, uh, somebody's birthday at any old random time. Uh, if you want to celebrate somebody's birthday, you celebrate it basically on on the birthday, and not at some other time later. And if the calendar changes uh, at some point in time, you want to continue celebrating it on the original day that the person was, was celebrated their birthday on. You don't want to change the day. So what you do is, in order to celebrate the day, the day probably you change it to the, the so that you can adjust it to the new calendar. Uh, well, a lot of the churches that have been uh, so far we'll call um, Europeanized, uh, and this is the difference between the Eastern churches and the Western churches. The Eastern churches fall, still followed are supposed to be following the uh, Julian calendar, the older calendar that was that, that was before uh, basically uh, the English changed their calendar. They changed, didn't change to the changed uh, to the Gregorian calendar until about the 1800s. So it was after the United States was actually created that um, everything changed. Uh, what was I going to say again? And as the Western Church, the European Church, started forcing the Eastern churches, the non-European Christian churches, into the European sphere. They forced them to start changing the calendar. And so a lot of Greek churches now, which are basically under the papacy now, they're now part of European Christianity. 
and no longer part of the original non-European Christianity. Uh, they're now celebrating under the Gregorian calendar, but have kept the days exactly the same. So uh, they use August the 1st on the Julian calendar as August the 1st on the Gregorian calendar. And that's not, fr that's not the right way to calculate things. Uh, basically, there's a 13-day difference, so uh, August 1st on the Julian calendar is now August 14th on the uh, Gregorian calendar, on the, uh, on the Gregorian calendar. So, you know, it's your choice. Do you want to have your churches Europeanized and altered uh, to the European sphere? Or do you want to keep your churches as they were in the Middle East, as, 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 with, with the original Church of Christ? It, it's up to how you want to do things. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of people have chosen to become Europeanized, and uh, this is part of the result: is, is, is that uh, the when the services are celebrated uh, aren't the exact same times as when they were uh, back under the original non-European Church of Christ. So that's sort of where the different differences come in. And I got to point out that Christ was not European. <laughs> you know, those of you who wonder well, what's so bad about being of the European uh, church is that well, what happens? Christ wasn't European. He, that's that's one of the things. He he wasn't European at all. He wasn't white. He didn't have uh, blonde hair and blue eyes. He was dark and had dark hair. Uh, and another other more more significant things were changed to make the Europe the church Europe make the church European. The European church. Uh, supported uh, and looked at uh, God Almighty and ignored God the Father. They brought in kings and, and they brought back slavery while the original Church of Christ removed kings and, and removed slavery. Uh, so the thing is, there, there, there is a significant difference in theology between the, the, the non-European Church and the European Church. Uh, and uh, my church, uh, as I said before, I'm not European, so I'm not part of the European church system. Uh, my church is independent. Uh, it connects directly back to the original house churches. That's why the, the church uh, is actually viewed as a house rather than as an institutional church. Uh, the priests are part of the people. They're not separated and, and stand above as this monolithic hierarchy. Uh, and there is a, there is a if you read the history of the church, you'll find that the people not only can elect their priests and bring the priests in from from their own people, but they can fire the priests and bishops as well. They they can unelect them and send them out of the church. So uh, this the, the 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 dynamic of the old non-European church was if was from my perspective very democratic, and this is the way democracy should be. So you know that's sort of where a lot of these different things are going, and in terms in terms of my ideas, and the way I like things. Now, not everyone likes that. No, more, a lot of people, uh, even the young, uh, what they call the younger generation, or sort of the determined younger generation, want don't want anything to do with the older generation that has the old, they call the hordio or the village church. Uh, even our church, is, our church is large. We're downtown Toronto. Um, we still maintain that village style. But the younger generation doesn't appreciate and doesn't want anything to do with that village lifestyle. They want more of the cathedral. They want the uh, institution as opposed to the village house church. And uh, this has sort of caused a little bit of a conflict. And there has been, uh, in my community in, in the last year or so, there has been a split between two different groups. Uh, the younger group uh, who wanted... Uh, a more institutional, a more regimented church uh, went with with one group, and we, at the, at the and the, and my church that I stay with, that I stayed with uh, has stayed uh, as the village and Horio church, and this kind of leads us because of the way things work in there and then the theology and how the theology moves forward, it moves forward into democracy, it moves forward into uh, political ideology, it, it basically taints taints. Uh, not, well, not, well, pains or brushes or tints, everything that you see in life. And this is true for any political ideology. And there is no political ideology that doesn't sit within a sphere of religion or theology. And this includes atheism. So, uh, 
I am going to explain more on this later on. I'm going to do different parts on this. Uh, I'll have to try to find the right graphics to see if I can get the right, you know, the dynamics into here. Uh, but right now, basically, it's just sort of getting the uh, dynamic graphical overlays into the editing bay here, getting them to work. Uh, I'm trying to work on the transitions, but the transitions don't seem to be working too well. Uh, even though I've gotten set up supposedly the way they're supposed to work, the transitions really don't seem to be working, but I'm going to try to do a workaround to see if I can get the transitions working. And the goal is, and this is why I watch a lot, a lot of the younger girls who work on uh, Sony Vega or the uh, Final Cut Pro, I'm trying to get uh, the video editing on Linux to be in the same quality, in the same league uh, as in on um, the uh, uh, Sony Vega Pro and the Final Cut uh, Final Cut Pro, th 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 those uh, uh, video editors. We'll see what happens, we'll see how it works out. Uh, right now, as I'm doing, working on the editing, uh, I think maybe in about a month or so, I'll be working on, uh, what you call it, uh, designing plugins for this so that uh, I can alter and update it uh, and keep it so that I can add in new features as I need to. Yeah, so, yeah, as like I said, slowly but surely starting to move into this stuff. I'm developing uh, on, 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 um, on, on Linux in the way I want to. You develop from what I call the surface on in. You know what you want to do in terms of a user. And as the user, you look at to see what, where the problems are, and you start digging further and further and further back until you get into the actual core of the program. Now, rather than actually altering the core of the program right away, uh, my point of view is build in plugins first, and then once you've got your plugins designed, uh, then you can adjust the core to, uh, to basically deal with the plugins in a different manner. But I think pl the plugin, uh, the plugin uh, structure of programming is actually the way to go. Uh, because you, uh, I've looked at the programs that try to be all in one thing and keep everything on the inside, and they sit on the computer like, very heavily. They're very heavy on the computer. They take up a lot of memory. But if you try to do things in a uh, plug-in uh, building block faction, you don't have to have everything loaded at the same time. You can load things as you need them and use and be very, very uh, conservative with your memory. We get very conservative with uh, the use of your desktop uh, and the environment that it's in. So that's, I think, the path to go down, and that's sort of what it, where I'm into now, and uh, you can sort of fall along with it. it. It does take time. It's not something that is an easy thing to do that, that can be done overnight for myself anyways. Uh, I'm not as brilliant as I, can, I can't just simply sit down and then a half hour later to have something done. This does take me a while. This does take me a couple of hours, so, yeah, that's the way things go. <laughs> anyways, uh, I will see you in the next segment. I'm going to try to do the next segment in church. We'll see how that goes. I've been filming, but not as much as I'd like to because it's still a little um, uh, unusual for the Greeks that are around me, the older Greeks that are around me, to have me uh, doing the filming inside a church. Anyways, uh, I'll see you in the next segment. All right, take it easy. Yeah, it's uh, zero hours and 23 minutes into the day of uh, Tuesday, August 21st, 2012. And uh, this is the next segment uh, of the Big Bang Theory RL. We are going late into the night as we do, uh, as we usually do. Uh, schedule is shifting, and so we're coming up with the next segment. And I'm trying to trying to come up with more ideas to, to sort of lengthen this up and make this a uh, uh, you know each episode a better episode. And one of the things I think I'll do is that uh, because. Um, uh, one of my channels, uh, Physics TV, is going to be the premier channel where everything is going to come out on. Uh, and this show is definitely uh, evolving out on uh, Big Bang, Th uh, out on uh, Physics TV. Uh, I thought I'd uh, uh, share some of the timeline with you, uh, some of the questions that are on the timeline from uh, from, uh, from uh, Physics TV. And one of the questions is from uh, I think it's Seamus uh, uh, McCade. I'm sorry if I got your name wrong. Let me know if I got your name right or wrong. Uh, and uh, he, his question was actually a while ago. Um, it was on June 25th. But I'm just now looking through the list certain, to some degree. Uh, so what, channel, what, what, what channel is this on on Comcast? He, uh, he's hoping, and, and this is what it's, uh, 
said later on that this channel, Physics TV, was on uh, the regular regular TV, and it's not there yet because uh, in order to get on TV, you need to have at least six hours worth of programming that uh, that, that can consider to be live. Uh, once you get six hours, you can loop it uh, over four time periods, and that gives you 24-hour TV across seven days. And you can put a feed out on the internet, and you can let Comcast and other other these uh, cable companies know that your feed is out there. And uh, for customers who recommend it. Uh, they can go pick up the feed. Um, I'm be offering my feed for free. Any any television uh, uh, carrier, any cable, any content carrier like uh, Comcast, uh, Warner Cable, what any, any any of the cable companies, any of the uh, you know the digital broadcasters, they can all uh, uh, pick my signal up and rebroadcast it for free. Uh, I don't really care about the money too much. Uh, all the stuff here is privately funded. Uh, through different donations, just like the way PBS is. PBS is funded publicly uh, through donations. This is exactly the same way how this is funded. That's why I have, uh, in the link down below, uh, I have um, uh, a qu request sending to, you know, to uh, private funding. Because that's how everything is funded here. There is, is through private donations. And so that's kind of where we are. And right now, um, Getting the bugs worked out, you, you, you see how this progresses. You're seeing literally in, in the Big Bang Theory, this is behind the scenes. Uh, behind the scenes, just <laughs> excuse me, behind the scenes uh, of a real life nerd. I'm really like, um, uh, I'm a cross between Sheldon Cooper and um, and Leonard. Uh, that's that's where my cross, uh, that's where I sit in terms of things. My I end up like Sheldon Cooper uh, because I have a really massive kid side. Uh, I still haven't fundamentally grown up yet. Uh, the number of PhDs I have is growing because uh, I started off from the point of view of the quantum physics random walk and decided to see how many different areas in academics that you get, get to. Through the, by the random walk, but then it kind of changed and realized that uh, not only could you not get to, that you could get to all the areas um, in uh, academics, but to go beyond that and actually do uh, exploration of the universe. And because uh, exploration of the universe literally covers everything, uh, <laughs> that's where things start off from. And so they ended up in a whole variety of different areas. So, uh, yeah, as the, uh, now I lost my train of thought. And so, I, you know, that's how this sort of came about, that I'm in a lot of different areas of doing all this different work. And, uh, this is sort of what gives me the, sort of the, uh, the, uh, the range, and that's what I said, the range of knowledge that, uh, that Sheldon Cooper has is something that I have because of the path my research has taken. Uh, but I'm not as uptight or uh, specific as Sheldon Cooper is. I'm more laid back like, uh, Leonard, like Leonard Hofstetter is. I think that's the last name. I can't really remember. Uh, it, it, and that's sort of how I form the cross, sort of a hybrid between the two different characters. So that's what you're watching here. You're watching that behind the scenes thing. You're watching how uh, my life unfolds. Uh, my my so large chunk of my social interaction is with the people on YouTube, different YouTubers. Uh, you'll see my different social reactions. You go into the, the list there, you watch my playlist, you watch uh, my feed, you'll see the various different interactions I have with the, with the YouTube community. Uh, I am trying to get, bring and film more and more of my life. Uh, I'm working on transitions between segments so I can add in more segments and get this up to a solid half hour every single day. That's sort of the next goal here is, is that uh, I've got up to 10-15 uh, minutes minimum. Now I want to push it up. I want to get it up to about a half hour every day and go from there. Uh, the next thing. Uh, Getting this uh, 
eventually into Comcast and developing other shows. Other shows are in development, but they do take they too, do they tend to take a lot of time really to get them off the ground, particularly when uh, you have to d develop and design all the equipment around it. Uh, like I don't buy my equipment. Everything I have is refurbished, and I mentioned this before. And everything I edit on and do all the work on, my whole environment here is Linux open source. And this is one TV channel, uh, Physics TV, that is going to be dedicated specifically to uh, open source. Everything we do is going to be based on open source. And as you see at the end of each, uh, uh, each episode, there's this uh, little flag there at the end that says uh, uh, free speech rules here at Democratic Earth. That's because I'm not acting on any copyright here whatsoever. This is free speech. I believe that, free, that, that the DCA, and as I've put down before, is a violation of free speech. I believe it vi violates the fun very fundamentals of democracy, and as such, will not be used here. But that means that uh, a lot of extra work has to be done in order to, um, because I, I can't just go and buy something off the shelf. I have to make whatever I want to make work. This includes the music, this includes the graphics, all these different things have to sort of work together. And if I can't get that done, and it doesn't happen easily, so it does take a bit of time, then that's what sort of prolongs things and makes the, the time sort of be pushed out. Uh, and so that's, that, that, so that's sort of where things are now. I am in, in, in this level of so I, this level of development. So my next thought, as I was uh, looking at Nasser's question about about uh, you know <laughs> about his disappointment, this is that about this, that that, this, that uh, physics TV isn't on the air yet. Um, my 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 statement is that it's coming. We are wor I'm working on it. Uh, if anyone out there can spare a buck, five bucks, ten bucks, even ten dollars a month. I'm not asking for a lot of money, I'm asking just for a little bit of money. Uh, if you could send that in. Uh, I've put my address now on uh, the uh, on the uh, main channel, it's there. Uh, I'm also looking for old laptops. If you have a laptop that's unwanted or isn't working with Windows properly, you can send it to me. I'll refurbish it, repair it, and get it working on Linux again. And I'll put it into the lab here. You can see this uh, if you want to. I'll take a picture. I'll put it on YouTube and show your your, your equipment working if you want. Uh, yeah. So that's that's how that's where things we're going with with physics TV. And I decided now to add in this feature here, where I'm looking at uh, feeds from my uh, YouTube, uh, from my Facebook page, and just sort of different topics that people post. And one person, uh, his name is uh, uh, Alex uh, B L O V. I'm assuming he's some form. Of, uh, he's uh, Slavic in some form. Uh, he sent me something from this uh, WordPress uh, blog called "Some Physics Ideas," and uh, we'll get into that in just a minute. As I stated, we're getting into a new segment of uh, Big Bang CRL where I look at the uh, the posts to the wall of uh, of uh, Physics TV on, of the uh, my, my Facebook page, and um, we're looking at the post uh, by uh, by Alex B E L O V, and you can sit, sit, tell, me, tell me what your name is. How to pronounce it. I really don't know how to pronounce it, pronounce it so he sent me in um, this uh, article or actually sort of posted it uh, from this WordPress blog called some physics ideas and it's about the Big Bang boson and why matter is not or why the matter is not uniform in the universe and we see we see this if you look at images from the Hubble and you expect and you had expected that uh, uh, the galaxies should be spread uniformly about. Uh, and as we're looking back in time, as we go further in, into the, and we're deeper into the field, uh, looking further and further out into the universe, that we should see if the time, if, if things are the way they're supposed to be, 
and you look back in time, you should see less and less clumpiness and more of a uniformity. But that's not actually what we're seeing of Hubble. What we're seeing of Hubble is that as we continue to look out, we're seeing still a clumpiness and a developness, a, de a, a level of development that shouldn't really be there if we're looking further back in time as we assume we are. And that's why I'm saying we're now we're assume we are, because it's based on the speed of light, we're assuming that light has a fixed, we're assuming here that light has a fixed uh, speed, and so far in the laboratory results, this is what we've, we've seen, and we haven't really been able to sort of show that this is different, but yet, when we look at the photographs from Hubble, and as we go further and further back, this seems to be contradictory. So there is, there is a, some degree of contradiction between the photograph that we see in Hubble when we go into the deep field photograph, and the, uh, the, the, the speed of light in, uh, in, 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 as we see it from standard physics. So this has thrown a little sort of question into uh, where, where our, our, our limits of no, our, our, where the limits of knowledge are, where our limits are on physics in terms of our understanding, and whether or not we actually need to push further. And as we see with the Higgs boson, uh, that's sort of where it is that we, we're kind of uh, dealing with a sort of this asymptotic knowledge where we're simply approaching the answer but never actually getting there. And, and this is simply sort of true with the Higgs boson, even with the, the, the sort of that exciting announcement in July that uh, evidence of a new particle that this what looks like to be another member of the family uh, of the boson family. They haven't declared it to be the Higgs boson yet, but it definitely looks like a boson particle. So that's sort of their initial classification. But even if they, my argument, my argument today, and this has been there like, like this for a while. Even if they find the Higgs boson, they still have a, a significant problem because if you understand the law of conservation, law of conservation, uh, sort of law of con conservation, wait, 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 excuse me, a law of conservation, and that's particularly the conservation of mass and conservation of energy, then what ends up happen happening is that you have to ask the question: once you find the Higgs boson, what created the Higgs boson? In other words, the Higgs boson can't come out of nothing. It can't just simply appear there. And this kind of, uh, we're in this sort of uh, loop, if we want to call it, if we want to call it a quantum loop, uh, where <laughs> we're kind of stuck in this sort of, ch the, 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 uh, the chicken and the egg paradox. What came first, the chicken or the egg? And this kind of, um, this article kind of brings up some of the problems here that, uh, as uh, you read through it, it talks about how the Higgs boson, and in particular about this new development of the Higgs boson, really opens up some new questions uh, as to uh, what we truly understand about how physics works. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read through this article just a little bit more, and then I will come back in a few minutes and give you a summary of the article. Yeah, it's about three o'clock in the morning, and I did look at the articles I wanted to look at, and I was talking, uh, not really talking, but looking at, uh, at about looking more in depth into the articles. And one of the things that you have to be careful with is that sometimes someone will post an article, uh, but you don't know who the author is. And if you don't know who the author is, it's kind of hard to check to see. Uh, Well, what was it? Knowing who the author is tells you a lot about what's possibly written in there and sort of the intention behind it. Uh, the article that was uh, on the Higgs, sort of, uh, uh, sort of around the Higgs boson issue, or and and, and, and the events of the Higgs boson, uh, seemed to corner on. Although he didn't spend a lot of time on this, the whoever the, the article is, and I'm using he as the. Uh, the pronoun for man, the species, so it covers both female and male, uh, so it's, it's, it's not gender specific, uh, if this is an issue to you. Uh, he was talking about, and I guess these people who are, who are talking about these things, 
uh, and he, I think, I'll classify him in a group of people who are materialists and believe that uh, everything in the universe uh, has some degree of substance to it. And so he's trying to quantify, in terms of the Higgs boson and on, on other things, uh, what we would call information. Uh, this is one of the problems that materialists have, is that we have information, we have learning, uh, this is sort of beyond what uh, animals actually have. Uh, we store information on a hard drive, we store information on paper, in terms of form, forms of books, we store paper in movies, and so on and so forth. And going beyond the actual physical par uh, particles of the object itself, movies are filmed on, are on film, they're on tape, now they're on hard drives and other elect sort of electronic items, which can be sort of, you can kind of explain it in terms of the, the actual particles there, uh, but they actually want to look at how, uh, at the, uh, at sort of, they want to quantify information in many ways in the same way you would quantify gravity, time, or any other type of, uh, of thing or substance within the universe. So if you're a materialist, and you believe that all things are material within the universe and that there is no God, then you have to try to explain what this whole thing or this particle of information is. And so that's really, that hasn't yet been shown in any form or substance uh, inside any of the uh, experiments in particle physics. And so, because we are as we were, and we're going to continue looking at CERN and, and other issues within uh, modern physics, uh, I think that we do need to go over and look at, uh, do a, a brief overview of particle physics, and I will see whether I'll put it as part of here, part of Big Bang Theory or out, or maybe I might uh, do a very, uh, I'll do a brief documentary on particle physics. Uh, for physics TV, and that will sort of add no, more uh, uh, another chunk of information or another uh, chunk of uh, produced material for physics TV. Mo sort of move the uh, the uh, the 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 time amount of time I'm producing, the, the amount of uh, time I produce per day forward a bit. So. I don't know how much more we'll move forward, but we'll see what happens with that. I haven't made that decision yet. Uh, the other, are, there are two more articles that, was, uh, that were posted. One requires a little more in-depth uh, study, to. The other one is on um, this whole thing about security news. And if you're part of the, 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 uh, the uh, computer, computer science community, this is something that goes on a lot. Everyone talks about IT, about computer security and stuff like that. And this article comes, uh, comes up and says, Anonymous Targets Mars Rover Curiosity. And it's a report on the uh, hacker group Anonymous. And it talks about how this anonymous group uh, attacked Mars, the Mars Rover Curiosity. But if you read, care, read the article carefully, and this is what you have to do, because even this, this is supposedly a professional en environment. And if you read it carefully, what ends up happening is that it's not that Anom Anonymous actually attacked the Mars, the Mars rover. It's that somebody in one of the IRC chats was asking information about attacking the Mars rover. And the person watching this chat assumed it was somebody from, from Anonymous. And so basically, this entire article is based upon an assumption with no real hard facts behind it. And unfortunately, this happens a lot when you, in, in publications, in uh, uh, journalism. You can have the journalists who are supposed to have a journalistic integrity, and everyone talks about journalistic integrity, 
exaggerating, pushing, sensationalizing things that don't really, in other words, they take this assumption and then build out upon this assumption that, that this assumption is real. And it's not, it's not necessarily real. So, this is something we have to be more careful with and I will go into this more. That's why I want to wait and see uh, about the second article, the second article, the other, other not the second article, this other article that I wanted to talk about, and apparently about the death of a, uh, of a physicist in India. And I want to do a more in-depth uh, research on this to make sure that I understand fully what's being said in there, and that what's being said in there is actually accurate. Uh, because this is a personal accounting of an event that occurred uh, within India. So. Uh, yeah, so we'll leave that for tonight, and, uh, oh, excuse me, that'll be it for today. Uh, and so, yeah, t tomorrow, the next episode will be another day. <laughs> All right, yeah, have a good night.
Welcome. Welcome to the library. And I am the library. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Free speech rules here at Democratic Earth.